Last month, a 46-year-old patient broke down in my office. She'd been following a kidney diet from the internet for six months, avoiding all potassium, eating minimal protein, terrified of every bite. Her muscles were wasting, her blood sugar was out of control, and her kidney function was still declining. This is what happens when we get kidney nutrition wrong. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. I've treated thousands of patients with diabetic kidney disease, and I'm here to tell you the outdated renal diet might actually be making things worse. Today, we're going to talk about the evidence-based nutrition strategy that's helped thousands of my patients stabilize their kidneys while keeping their blood sugar controlled without feeling hungry, confused, or afraid of food. But first, let me tell you what nobody talks about. The number one healthy food that's secretly destroying your kidneys isn't really what you think. It's not salt. It's not protein. It's phosphate additives hiding in your whole grain bread, your lean deli turkey, and even your healthy protein bars. These synthetic phosphates are absorbed 80 to 100% compared to just 30 to 60% from natural plant-bound phosphorus. And these phosphates are accelerating vascular calcification in your kidneys right now. Here's the truth. If you have diabetes and kidney disease, nutrition feels impossible because you're getting conflicting advice. Your diabetes educator says eat more protein for blood sugar stability. Your kidney doctor says cut protein to protect your kidneys. And the internet says avoid all potassium. And your neighbor swears by the carnivore diet. Stop the madness. Today, we're building your personalized nutrition blueprint based on the 2025 American Diabetes Association standards and the KDGO guidelines, the same protocols that I use with my patients who've gone from pre-dialysis to stable while improving their A1C. Let's start with two foundational principles that change everything. First, individualization is non-negotiable. Your ideal plate depends on your EGFR, that's your kidney function number, your urine albumin creatinine ratio, that's how much protein you're spilling in the urine, your potassium and phosphorus labs, your blood pressure medications, especially if you're on ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or SGLT2 inhibitors, and your other conditions. All these fancy words I just mentioned, I've explained them detailed in this channel. You're welcome to look at the other videos on it. Remember, there's no universal kidney diet. Working with a renal dietitian isn't optional. It's essential, plant-forward, minimally processed wins. Every major study, from recent KDGO reviews to large observational cohorts, they all show that plant-predominant patterns with whole vegetables, fruits, legumes, intact grains, and nuts, when labs allow, lead to better blood pressure, less inflammation, and slower kidney function decline. Plants provide fiber that controls blood sugar, potassium that's less bioavailable than supplements, and zero phosphate additives. The question everyone asks me, how much protein? So here's what the evidence actually says. For non-dialysis CKD patients with diabetes, you want to aim for 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight daily. If you weigh 180 pounds, which is about 82 kilograms, that's roughly around 65 grams of protein per day. That's not the 100 grams like some fitness influencers suggest and not the 40 grams like the outdated renal diets recommend. So why this amount? The MDRD study and subsequent guidelines, they support 0 0.8 grams per kilogram per day for non-dialysis chronic kidney disease patients to protect their kidneys while preserving muscle. Now going substantially below this, risk something called sarcopenia, which is muscle wasting, and you can also have malnutrition. At 0 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, you protect kidney function while maintaining muscle mass as long as you're lifting weights, which is critical for blood sugar control and preventing falls. But here's what changes everything. Where your protein comes from matters more than how much. 
animal proteins, they create more acid load and contain highly absorbable phosphorus. Plant proteins, things like tofu, tempeh, lentils, beans, they create less acid. They contain poorly absorbed phosphorus and come packaged with fiber and phytonutrients. My patients who shift to a 70% plant protein diet, they see their phosphorus drop even while maintaining adequate total protein. Now, before we continue, if this information is helping you understand kidney nutrition better, please share this video, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. This would help me out to continue this work and it would make a difference in someone who has diabetes. Remember, early diabetes changes can really help to save the kidneys. Now, let's dive into exactly what to eat. Let me show you exactly what this looks like. Here's what Maria, the patient I've mentioned earlier, eats in a typical day. Breakfast is around 15 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs, 8 grams of fiber. What is it? In her case, she's having steel-cut oats, half a cup dry. It's cooked with extra water to create that creaminess. She's adding in one tablespoon of ground flax seeds to get some fiber and the omega-3s. She has half a cup of blueberries. Remember, blueberries have lower potassium than bananas. She's adding two tablespoons of hemp hearts, which is a complete protein. And then for flavoring, she's adding cinnamon and vanilla extract. And this gives you the flavor without sodium. For lunch, it's around 20 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs, and 12 grams of fiber. What is it? She's having a quinoa, chickpea buddha bowl. It's half a cup of cooked quinoa, half a cup of chickpeas rinsed if they are canned, two cups of mixed greens, not spinach if potassium restricted, roasted red peppers, cucumbers, shredded carrots, and then finally, to top it all off, two tablespoons of tahini lemon dressing. Once again, no added salt. For snack, it's about 5 grams of protein, 20 grams of carbs, 3 grams of fiber. What is it? Apple slices with 1 tablespoon of almond butter. Or if you're potassium restricted, rice cakes with hummus. Then finally, for dinner, there's 20 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs, and another 10 grams of fiber. What is it? About a 3-ounce grilled salmon or tempeh, 1 cup roasted cauliflower and green beans half a cup farro or brown rice, and a side salad with olive oil and lemon. And for those who absolutely want that evening snack, that's needed another five grams. You can have a quarter cup of unsalted nuts or seeds, portion control. What's the total? It's around 65 grams of protein, moderate carbs with fiber, minimal sodium, and of course, controlled portions. Now, Here's where most people fail when it comes to their diets. They're reading labels wrong. I'm going to teach you a five-second label scan that can absolutely help improve your kidneys. Number one is find FOS, P-H-O-S, FOS, in the ingredients. If you see it, put it back. Phosphate additives, names like sodium phosphate, calcium phosphate, phosphoric acid. These are kidney poison. They're common in many processed foods, especially deli meats, processed cheeses, colas, baked goods. Check the label for the word FOS. Number two is sodium per serving. This is just my quick shortcut. Sodium in milligrams should be less than the calories. In other words, if it has 200 calories per serving, sodium should be under 200 milligrams per serving. Keep in mind, the evidence-based target is under 140 milligrams per serving for low sodium and keeping total daily intake. And what's that total daily intake number? To stay under 2,000 to 23 milligrams of sodium. Then there's added sugars. Remember, added sugars should be zero for kidney protection. Now, natural sugars in fruit are fine, but added sugars is what's going to spike the insulin and cause inflammation. For fiber, fiber should be around 3 grams per serving for grains and 2 grams for other foods. Fiber is your blood sugar's best friend. I call fiber nature's ozempic. In terms of serving size, a general trick to know 
is when you look at things like a can of healthy soup can be as much as 2.5 servings. So everything you see on the ingredient list, the sodium, the potassium, everything, you have to multiply that by 2.5 for reality because most people are not having a serving, they're having the can. All right, now let's shift over to potassium. To me, I think potassium is the most misunderstood mineral in kidney disease. You do not automatically need low potassium just because you have chronic kidney disease. If your potassium is normal and you're not on multiple potassium raising drugs, you can enjoy a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. The benefits, fiber, antioxidants, blood pressure control, they far outweigh the risks. But if your potassium runs high over five, here's your strategy. Some general foods to think about. Lower potassium fruits, you can eat those freely, are things like berries, apples, grapes, pears, watermelon. Medium potassium foods, where you want to do a little bit of portion control, are peaches, plums, pineapples, and tangerines. Now, for high potassium foods, these are the foods you want to limit or avoid are things like bananas, oranges, kiwi, and especially dried fruits. And don't forget, we have all sorts of things we've talked about in the past, specifically vegetable hacks. So the leaching method is simple. You peel, you slice, you soak in water for two plus hours, rinse, then boil in fresh water. This can actually reduce the content of potassium by as much as 50%. And then when it comes to choosing vegetables, choose green beans, cauliflower, cabbage, lettuce, peppers, and limit things like potatoes, tomatoes, spinach, and avocado. Let's bust the biggest myths that are sabotaging your success. Myth number one is plant proteins are incomplete. The truth here is combining greens and legumes throughout the day provides all your essential amino acids. You don't need meat for complete protein. Myth number two, avoid all sodium. What's the truth? The target is under 2,000 milligrams daily. It is not zero. Remember, your body needs some sodium for critical nerve function. Myth number three, carbs are the enemy. What's the truth? Complex carbs with fiber will stabilize blood sugars better than low-carb diets that simply load you with protein and phosphorus. Myth number four, supplements can replace food. What's the truth? Supplements often contain poorly regulated phosphorus and potassium. Food first always. That's your motto. Here's a grocery shopping list. And you'll see these here and you can go ahead and screenshot it. And you'll also find it on selfprincipal.org. All of these lists will be available to you. I'm working on creating all sorts of handouts and resources for all of you to have through selfprincipal.org for proteins. You want to choose organic, phosphate-free when possible. Those are names like tofu, tempeh, edamame, lentils, chickpeas, black beans, hemp hearts, chia seeds, ground flax, wild-caught fish, remember, try to do it two times a week max, and egg whites or egg substitute. That's a good source of proteins. With grains, you're looking for intact, not instant. What are intact ones? Steel cut or rolled oats, quinoa, farro, barley, brown rice, wild rice, whole grain pasta. Make sure you check phosphate additives. For vegetables, look for fresh or frozen without the sauce. Cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, green beans, snap peas, bell peppers, cucumbers, lettuce, arugula. And if your potassium is high, skip the spinach carrots or radish. There's fruits. For fruits, remember fresh or frozen without added sugar. All berries, love berries, apples, pears, grapes, watermelon, citrus, as long as potassium is not a concern. Then for fats, you're aiming for unsaturated fats, things like olive oil, avocado oil, nuts and nut butters, tahini, sunflower seed, butter, ground flax, chia seeds. And then finally, for seasonings, 
look for sodium-free seasoning. So all herbs and spices, garlic, ginger, lemon, lime, vinegar, and nutritional yeast, umami without the sodium. Oftentimes people ask me, well, what about eating out? Okay, so let me give you a little restaurant survival guide. You can have fast food. You need to make better choices. Let's be real. Nobody is 100% perfect. If you go to McDonald's, for example, have a grilled chicken salad, apple slices, and water. If you go to Subway, have a veggie sandwich with no cheese. You can have it with oil and vinegar. If you go to Chipotle, have a rice bowl with beans, veggies, and salsa. Once again, no cheese or sour cream. What about if you go to sit-down restaurants? Try to order grilled or baked, not fried. Put the sauce dressing on the side. Double the vegetables instead of opting for potatoes or french fries. Ask for no added salt in cooking. So, let's come back to Maria and show you what happened to her after six months on this plan. Her urine albumin creatine ratio dropped from 679 to 75 milligrams per gram. Her phosphorus normalized without binders. Her A1C improved from 8.2 to 6.8%. She lost 15 pounds without trying to diet. And in her words, her energy doubled. What she told me was she said, I finally feel like I can eat without fear. For all of you that are looking at this, your blood work will tell you if this is working. By about the first one to two weeks, you will find your energy improves, your blood sugar stabilizes. By about month one, you will notice your blood pressure starts to improve, usually by about five to 10 points. By month number three, you will see that your albumin creatinine ratio, that's how much protein you're spilling, will drop and your phosphorus will normalize. And usually by about months four to six, I see that the GFR, which is your kidney function, starts to stabilize and in some cases improves. There are critical warning signs you must know on when to call your doctor. If your potassium is over 5.5, if you have rapid weight loss, if you have persistent nausea, which is, could be a sign of uremia, if you have severe fatigue despite good nutrition, all of these require making a call immediately to your doctor. If you want to see exactly how diabetes destroys your kidneys at the cellular level, I'm going to cover all of that information coming up in video two of this four-part series. We're going to take a look at how there's silent damage that's happening right now. And we'll talk about the simple tests that can catch it years before having any symptoms. And if you're wondering, can kidney damage actually be reversed? We're going to address that as well. That's going to be in video number three. That's going to answer the controversial questions with the latest research that's just been published. Now, remember, nutrition isn't a side treatment for diabetic kidney disease. It's the foundation that makes all of your other treatments work better. You don't need perfection. You need consistency and the right strategy. So an action step here would be screenshot the shopping list that I went through, clean out your pantry of fast foods this week and ask your doctor for a referral to a renal dietitian. Your kidneys and your blood sugar will thank you. And as always, I end my videos with expressing gratitude. So don't forget to express kindness to people around you and to express kindness to yourself by taking care of your health. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey and I will see everyone next time.